Africa today is a continent of 54 countries, a varied landscape, peoples and languages. But they're all united by a history of fighting foreign subjugation. The struggle for independence was mostly won through peaceful and organized mass resistance, demonstrations, strikes and political rallies. But sometimes Africans had to resort to arms in the face of discrimination, oppression and bloody crackdowns by European colonial powers or white settlers. At the dawn of the colonial era in 1870, most of Africa was still in the hands of the Africans themselves. But increasingly, there were more confrontations with European imperial powers, notably Britain and France, as they laid claim to African land. Dr. Ombongi says a common feature of colonialism is that it always seeks to dominate. People are resisting the alienation from their, their, their cultural, uh, social roots. The bottom line was that the colonial system uh, was uh, uh, totally oppressive. On the onset of colonialism in East Africa from 1895 onwards, virtually every community responded uh, to the encroachment of the colonial authorities. Across the continent, resistance was met by defeat and European occupation. However, the drive for independence could not be extinguished and soon gained momentum with the onset of the World Wars. The Second World War, more or less like the First World War, uh, provided a forum where an African and uh, a white settler could share in the battlefront, share in the sufferings that came with fighting the enemies of empire at the time. They have their fears, they have their interests. And we, we are fighting in the same course now. And it created a situation where there, there were expectations that after this, we will be granted our rights as human beings just like that. The general history of Africa says there has been a tendency to describe those Africans who did not resist colonial rule as peace-loving and those who did fight as bloodthirsty. It says there was resistance to Europeans in virtually every region in Africa where they were present. The rebellions were just wars of liberation, which is why they were supported by the overwhelming majority of Africans. By the mid 20th century, the forces of nationalism and resistance were too great for the Europeans to overcome and Africa began to gain its independence, starting with Libya in 1951 followed in rapid succession by Egypt in 1952, Sudan, Morocco and Tunisia in 56, and Ghana in 1957. By the 1970s, all of Africa was free from colonial rule, except for a handful of states in Southern Africa. Their history was different because of the dominance of white settlers. The last country to become free of white rule was South Africa, when Nelson Mandela became president in 1994. To paraphrase the title of Mandela's autobiography, it has been a long walk to freedom for Africa. And colonialism has left an indelible mark on the continent.